USA, America's All Entertainment Network. you found that accommodation that uncomfortable that you let him? Let him, Mr. Rinaldo. Oh, yes. You remember I mentioned to you earlier about writing a letter telling your family goodbye. I brought pen and paper. Now you sit down, I'll tell you what to write. I told you no. I'm not writing any letter. I think you're better, Miss Travis. As you can see, this is the perfect place to convince you. You wouldn't. No, no, of course not. Miss Travis, we would do nothing to hurt you, as I explained to you earlier. We took you in protective custody. You see to it that no harm would come to you. You can't expect me to believe that. You're just afraid that I'll... But you what? Can ever make a speech? We have very reliable information you and your friends had planned to disrupt our ceremonies. It is true, is it not? No, it isn't. You do not lie very well, my child. The truth of the matter is you and these uh, fanatics, you were recruited by them. You have gone to their side because of your uh, juvenile ideals. You think you can uh, get up in front of TV cameras all by yourself and start a revolution, don't, don't you? Don't be ridiculous. How am I going to do something like that? Oh, because of the prophecy. Surely you remember the prophecy, my dear. Yes. And so do you, obviously. That's the real reason you locked me up down here. Because you're afraid of me. Oh, well. That is the way you put it. Yes, that is quite right. We are afraid. Problem is, she isn't. Well, let me tell you something. I'm not going to write any letter. And my family is going to start to worry about me. And when they can't find me, they're going to call the police. So you're going to have disruption on your hands no matter what. My dear child, let us stop playing these silly childish games. No. Because it isn't a game to you, Ronaldo. You've murdered people because of me and because of who I am. I see. Because you are Eden's very own Joan of Arc. You like these storybook games? Very well. Come in, Stephen. It seems our uh, young friends here are like these uh, storybook games. Well, let us oblige her. What are you going to do? few uh, funny stories with you. I could use a laugh. Well, I brought a story, all right. I don't know how funny you'll think it is. Huh? You want something? A uh, beer, coffee, something? No, thanks. I'd like your ear for a minute, if it's okay. Sit down. Calvin, look, something really strange has happened. This guy named David Cameron has come into Monticello. He's a guy that I knew when I was in Washington, D.C. What is he, a cop? Yeah, that's pretty close. He was a security officer with the State Department. I only saw him a few times, but I tell you, he's a guy I'll never forget. Does this have something to do with your old man? You bet it does. Remember I told you my father was suspected of stealing certain documents when he worked with the State Department in Washington, D.C. David Cameron is the guy who conducted the investigation. Ah, uh, not one of your uh, favorite people, I guess. Oh, that's saying the least. I don't know how far he conducted this investigation because nobody would talk to me about it, but I do know where the thing ended. Yeah. So, what's he doing here in town? Well, now he's conducting another investigation, this time about a guy named Foley. Now, he's this phony counter-espionage agent that we've been hearing about. Yeah. Well, I think what all this means, Calvin, is that Cameron is beginning to believe that my father was innocent. What makes you think that? 
Well, because according to what Michael Carr told me, the guys in Washington think that maybe they were wrong. Maybe it was Jefferson Brown who took those documents. Look, Tyler, I know how much this means to you. I mean, when you first got here, all you ever talked about was clearing your father's name. I mean, it was an obsession with you. Man, I'd hate to see you fall back into that same old trap. Well, you don't have to worry about that. I tried my hand at it once, and I couldn't get any information, so I guess I'd better leave it to the pros. You mean that? Sure I mean it. Look, I'm a cop just like you are. I'm going to stick to my own work. <laughs> yeah, well, no, don't do your job like I've been doing it. I'm uh, afraid I haven't exactly been a sterling example these days. Well, what do you mean by that? I, I should be doing something, Tyler, that I'm not doing. Like what? <sighs> Look, are you, are you sure you don't want a beer? I certainly could use that. OK, I'll have a beer. Calvin, this doesn't happen to be about Troy Bannister, does it? On the nose, my friend, on the nose. You remember when we went to see Eddie and uh, he told us that Troy had been there to get some getaway money? Yeah, I remember. Well, you remember him talking to us about a, a friend of Troy's by the name of Skipper? Right, this guy was supposed to get him a car or something like that. Damien, I know who Skipper is. What? I got it from Dee Dee. Boy, she mad at me again. I mean, she she thinks I tricked her, pumped her for information in order to catch her brother. I don't know. Maybe I did, but I didn't mean to hurt her, or him for that matter, a lousy punk. Calvin, are you telling me that you have some knowledge about Troy Bannister's whereabouts and we're both sitting in here doing nothing? <laughs> we're uh, drinking beer. That's not exactly nothing. It seems to me that you're uh, very concerned about Dee Dee's feelings. I think that you don't want to be the one to put the handcuffs on her brother. Seems to me you're right. You know, uh, I think it's about time that I took over this case. You're off. And you mean that? Yeah, I mean it. Look, all you have to do is to tell me who this skipper is and where I can find him. Well, look, all I know so far is his full name is Skipper Parsons, and he runs a little garage. Look, how much longer is that going to take? How many times are you going to ask me how much longer is that going to take? Skipper, I got to get out of this town before morning. Why? You think the cops don't notice cars at night? Look, man, is this the only heap you could get your hands on? There must be a half dozen cars out in back. I got a half a dozen old wrecks out in back. None of them get you 10 feet. Look, maybe, I just keep them for parts. Maybe I should just go to a used car place and pick up a jalopy or something. Sure. You do that. And maybe your exhaust will start smoking on the freeway. Some cop will stop you for that. Maybe your tail light will go out. Maybe your muffler will go. Ain't nothing like a noisy car to attract attention. All right, all right, just fix it, huh? I told you I probably won't have it ready till in the morning. Now, by the time I get this carburetor working and fix the short in the ignition. All right, all right, look, maybe I should just sleep here in the garage tonight, OK? Well, it won't be the first time. Of course, you used to sleep in the daytime when you were working for me. Yeah, and you used to always catch me, too, huh? You were some lazy little kid. You know that, Troy? See, I wasn't cut out to be no mechanic. I, had, I wanted something different. Yeah, well, you found something different. That's why you got to get out of town. Yeah, man, you sound just like Dee Dee. Does your sister know about this? Yeah, she knows about it. Everybody knows Troy Bannister's a real bad dude. Hey, bang, bang, Bannister, they call me. Huh? Hey, you scared? Yeah, I'm scared, Troy. For you. Hey, look, don't you worry about me. You worry about that carburetor, eh? Are you sure it wouldn't be better to... I mean, after all, your sister is a lawyer now. Man, there ain't nothing she can do for me, man. There ain't nothing nobody can do for me. Every lawyer in this town couldn't keep me out of the joint for the rest of my life. If I make it that far. What? Look, I'm a cop killer. If they pick me up, the cops will make sure I resist arrest. And man, you know what that means. I still can't believe it, what you did, Troy. Look, I didn't mean to do it. Skipper, I swear, man, I don't know what happened up there that night, why that cop shot at me. Maybe, maybe I was thinking bad, but I wasn't doing bad. Maybe if you told him that. Oh, yeah, yeah, see, I mean, I just walk up to them and say, look, I don't know what you're talking about. You... And then you get off the late phone calls. 
Garage. Hey, how you doing, Dee Dee? Well, Skipper, I have been doing a lot better. Have you seen my brother? Troy? Why you think that? Little brat hasn't been around here to see me in a couple of years. The other guy. Boy, was he scared. Huh? <laughs> it looks awful. I mean, maybe we should put some iodine on it or something. You forget, Mitzi, this is the 16th century. Iodine hasn't been invented yet. Well, I mean, there's got to be a doctor in this castle. Oh, sure, yeah. He'd probably have a, a chant or uh, put a leech on it or something like that. No, thank you. You were so brave tonight. You really were. I was telling Dee you were just like Errol Flynn. I mean, the way you held that sword. Did you ever take fencing lessons? No, I, I never did. I didn't think so. <laughs> I did watch a lot of movies, though. When I was a kid, I always wanted to be a knight in shining armor. Who'd think I end up a court jester? Well, you are my knight, just the same. <laughs> we failed. Yeah, this uh, knight did not succeed in his quest. Jody's in a lot of trouble, and we have the faintest idea where she is. Please forgive me for leaving you this way. Leaving you this way. The truth is... The truth is... I am too ashamed. I am too... ashamed. To face you. Come on, honey, keep writing. Okay. Oh, don't trouble, Geraldine. That's the least I can do to show my appreciation, not only for bringing me home, but for Nancy filling in for Nicole this evening. Oh, I enjoyed doing it. Besides, we didn't want Miles and Nicole to miss the opportunity that they had. I heard that invitations to the Eden pageant were difficult to come by. Apparently they were. They didn't go there on a pleasure trip. They went to see the jury, didn't come to any harm. Well, about that nightcap. Well, uh, all right. Uh, may I do the honors? Please, Mike. I'll have a little brandy. Nancy? I'll have the same, dear. Thank you. Now, Mike, tell me what's happening at the district attorney's office. Any further development about that man, the one with the fake credentials? George Foley? Yes, he seems to have stirred up quite a storm in Washington. They even sent a man down here by the name of Cameron to look into the matter. It wouldn't be David Cameron by any chance. Yes, that's right. Do you know him? Oh, not very well. He was a friend of my son's when Colin was in the Senate. As a matter of fact, Colin had a great deal to do with his appointment as Chief Security Officer. Well, isn't that interesting? Although you knew so many people in Washington. <laughs> I remember once at our home there, when David was a dinner guest, and Colin told him jokingly that when he was elected President of the United States, that he'd see to it David became the head of counter-espionage agency. Well, he's almost there now, uh, Geraldine. Mr. Cameron is the number two man of the CEA. He has done very well for himself, hasn't he? Yes, and I wonder if the Fowler-Wilcox case was one of the reasons for his success. Cameron told us that he was the chief investigator on the Wilcox case, which accounts for his interest in this man Foley, since Foley's questions are all about Jefferson Brown. It's ironic, isn't it? Hmm? What is? that David Cameron would become second in command of the CEA, and the man he investigated might have been number one. Fowler Wilcox? Do you mean Damien Tyler's father was being considered for the job as head of the CEA? <laughs> yes, he was. That was told to me in confidence by a high government official shortly before Fowler's suicide. Oh, well... Apparently, Mr. Cameron isn't too pleased with the result of that investigation, even if he was promoted. It must have been a painful thing for him, investigating a man like Wilcox on a possible charge of treason. I didn't believe it then, and I don't believe it now. You and Damien. It would be very gratifying if they could lay the blame where it belongs, finally. 
Jefferson Brown or whoever. It wouldn't make any difference to Fowler Wilcox, but it certainly would to his son. Well, Mr. Cameron's newfound interest may be the key to it. I would certainly hope so. Honey, since Geraldine did know Mr. Uh, Cameron, what would you think of our arranging uh, a sort of reunion? Mm, that might be a good idea. What do you think, Geraldine? I'd be interested in seeing David again, although he might have forgotten me by now. Oh, he would never have forgotten you. Uh, arrange something at our house, all right? I'd like that. Nancy, I really think we should be going. You both have had a long day. Yes, you are right. Mm. Geraldine, I hate to leave you alone. When do you expect to hear from Raven? My dear, I expect nothing from Raven but the unexpected. No, I didn't even... <sighs> Miss Alexander, wake up. Dear. Wake up! It's no use. She'll just have to sleep it off. Well, she hasn't told us a damn thing, Howard. Are you sure you gave her the right stuff? I didn't Not even, even do sodium anything. pentothal can make people talk about things they don't know. She hasn't told us anything. She must know something. She was married to the man. Maybe oh, he knew how to keep a secret. Maybe she does. I give up. I ain't even doing anything. No, what's the use? Should... Better sleep. We'll try again tomorrow. Stupid thing. Come on. No. This can't be happening. I can't be arrested. I didn't kill Jinx Avery. I didn't. It's all a fact. My dears. Well, uh, as soon as I find out about Mr. Cameron's schedule, I'll uh, call you about that dinner. That sounds fine. Geraldine, are you really sure that uh, Fowler Wilcox was being considered for the job as head of the CEA? Oh, yes. I was told he had the job, definitely. Assuming he had Senate approval. That's very interesting. I wonder if Mr. Cameron knew that. We'll soon find out. Bye-bye, dear. Good night. Good night. Good night. Do you still practice medicine, or is that doctor title just honorary, if that's the right word? You know damn well I have no license. Are your credentials any better? Oh, indeed. The best that money can buy. Well, I'm leaving. Now, wait a minute. I think we should try one more time. <laughs> it's a waste of good sodium pentothal. That woman upstairs knows nothing. I don't agree with you. I think she's just being drug resistant. <laughs> You know what the problem is? Yes. I think we should drop this game. Stop pretending to be government agents. Let her see our claws. No! Oh, my God. Streetwise and full of surprises. But when you need a friend, he's the man you can count on. He's Marco. And on the edge of night, Jody is missing. We've got to do something. We can't just sit here and wait. If anything happens, we'll hear about it. And Gavin returns to Monticello, determined to find her. One night to live, the edge of night. Love in the afternoon. One life to live. She is my daughter and 
I have the final say in everything she does in her life, so why don't you just go on home? I'm afraid that we'll have to work it out in the courtroom. And on the edge of night, Gunther returns to the scene of the crime. He can't be. He's dead. Don't you believe in ghosts? I'm a ghost. <laughs> One life to live. The edge of night. Weekdays. On the edge of night, discover two women, their beauty captured on canvas, their lives caught in a delicate web of intrigue. Well, Jody, here we are. A young woman pursued by two men and haunted by an eerie likeness of herself. And Raven, fighting for everything she has and for the man she thought she knew. My husband was Skylar Whitney. This man is the imposter. Jody, Raven, two women on the edge of night. Weekdays. On all my children. Just what are you talking about? All I want to know is what is wrong. Nothing is wrong. Something has to be wrong. You're treating me like you don't even know I'm alive. And on the edge of night. I am talking to you as someone who loves you and is very worried about you. Don't you see the difference? No, I'm not sure I do. Oh, you're a stubborn kid. And stop calling me a kid. All my children, the edge of night. Weekdays. Dad. On One Life to Live. Maybe you're needed at the studio as soon as possible. Look for me in the fourth floor editing room. The next victim of the Blood Moon murderer is Mimi. And on the edge of night, Jody is enchanted by the splendor of the royal pageant. I still can't believe we're here. Get fearful of the unexpected. I'm scared. One Life to Live, The Edge of Night, Weekdays. On All My Children. You just know me at work. But you don't know the real me. I do. I want to make love to her. And on the edge of night. Do you think I'd be so worried about you if I didn't care about you so much? Despite a warning from Gavin, Jody dares to venture into a hotbed of intrigue and danger. All my children, the edge of night, weekdays. On One Life to Live, Bo's happiness with his new family turns to suspicion. One of us is being honest with you, and you're gonna have to decide which one it is. Do you believe Drew, or do you believe me? And on the edge of night. Don't worry, Jody's gonna be okay. <laughs> Jody is held captive in an ancient castle dungeon. Please, please, you have to help me. I, I don't know how to get out of here. One life to live, the edge of night, weekdays. <laughs> On Ryan's Hope, for Maeve, a dance contest is the answer to a dream come true. I can't believe it's happening. While for Joe and Siobhan, lost love becomes a bitter contest. And on the edge of night. I am being held here prisoner because I am a threat to you and your gang. While the splendor of the pageant goes on, Jody reaches a point of no return in her deadly mission. Ryan's Hope, the edge of night. Weekdays.